Vampires. Um, yes, vampires. Uh, vampire, vampire survivors. I was trying to come up with something and my brain was not working fast enough, so you get that nothing. That sucks. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Over here, I'm Vin, that is Jordan, and that is Pedro. Together with your chat realm dynamic, Jordan is live, helping us form, you know it's in blah, cocaine, Voltron. So what's new, everyone? I was just explaining, by the way, I'll be testing in production, so if everything explodes and crashes, blame it on Germany. Fire! <laughs> I mean, I, I always blame Germany, so I'm, I'm one step ahead of you. When in doubt, blame it on Germany. Uh, Yeah, that thing I was talking about in the pre pre super season last week, when I was like, so you ever just buy something on ebay and you're like i don't know about this man <laughs> and uh i genuinely got a hold of something outside of my price range really 100 percent for testing you know to buy something to play around with it uh, for interfacing linux but it was an incredible price and it's something that i wouldn't have bought unless it was from a long time seller seller that just deals in this stuff i'm like okay well there's some chance i might not end up with a air conditioner <laughs> <laughs> that is secretly a um, Mason block or whatever game. What was in your hand? <laughs> some it was, it was some, <laughs> some bricks. It was it was a recycling bin with some blankets and some wrapped around some bricks. That's that's what it was. True story, legitimately. And you had carried that thing on the bus too, man. I know. I, no, I, I I was lucky enough to have my roommate's car, and mm. but yeah, get, transporting it back. It's like, hey, can I can, can we drive down there again? No, <laughs> please. please? <laughs> I mean, extenuating circumstances. Yeah, right? like, yeah. <laughs> There's all some breaks. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I got a sound card to play around with. That's uh, RME AIO Pro, the one that came out last year. And uh, it doesn't have any big, giant capacitors on it. It doesn't blink. So, I don't know if it's really pro, according to the audio files. <laughs> well, hopefully, uh, <laughs> we'll be able to get some pro out of it. But, yeah, experimental drivers, uh, work in progress drivers better developed but i did put together a guide for getting those drivers up and running on debian so yeah that uh and learned a lot more about kernel modules than i ever fucking care to jordan <laughs> it's it's the thing that happens when once you got to do deep dives you're like well now i know how this shit works i uh, regret it but now i know you know what that's one of the fringe benefits of linux i mean how many times have you been like oh i need to figure out how this one thing to work in x and like man i know four new things yeah, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. well, I, I've, I, I've learned an entirely new programming language so I can fucking read this error. Yeah, that's great. Oh, uh, you got a surprise squirrel like that. Oh, yeah. You, the, the two lines, I don't want to, okay, I got to spoil this because it sounds better coming from somebody else in our Discord was, there's a fucking squirrel in my room. <laughs> then radio style through, and it ran through my fucking soup. Yep. <laughs> But Jordan will explain how that makes a yeah, little bit of well, sense. Uh, yeah, well, you, you see, there there was a squirrel in my room. You, you you might have seen behind me. I have a fireplace that has a chimney. It leads to the roof. And, you know, on most houses, there's some, like, mesh on on top of the chimney to stop the, the critters from going down. Yeah, that, apparently that's broken now, so I got to get someone to go up on the roof. But, you know, I've, I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm working. I hear I hear I, I, I go upstairs to get some lunch. I come back. I have my nice bowl of soup. Mm -hmm. It looks real good. I set it down. Scramble, scramble, scramble. What the fuck was that? Squirrel. And I'm like, oh, God, I got to shoot this out. And I go to shoot it, and it goes whoosh, right across my soup, into my soup. And I'm like, well, I ain't drinking that. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that, that, I, I don't, I don't want rabies soup. I was, I was so mad. It got, it, it, yeah. Fi 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 finally shoot it out. Um, Thankfully, on YouTube, they have a number of videos that are just like ultrasonic sounds for shooing off animals. Uh, so I bla I had my phone blasting it. I had a tablet blasting it. And I had the room speakers here blasting it. And I'm just like, we're creating a hostile area for you. It, it, it eventually ran back up the chimney. And now I have a dog crate in front of there barricaded by a bass guitar to stop any more creatures <laughs> from coming into my room and fucking up my soup. Also, I pulled my back, so I'm in a lot of pain right now. I'm just doing real great today. Yeah. Hey, man. You know one thing I don't think will ever get down your chimney? 
A chimney? The, ho- the horse? The horse. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. I've, I've seen it with like a jetpack and some grappling hooks. I wouldn't put it past it. That horse is very, very tricky and very, very dead. It's the steam. Well, it's not quite a sale, but it's kind of a preamble to one. Steam Next Fest, October 2022. Uh, we just had a Next Fest a while ago, but there's a new one coming up. Um, and it's going to be in the first week of October. If you want to register to have your game featured, the deadline is July 21st. Uh, you're going to need to have a demo if you're going to be featured. Um, and yeah, uh, this is this is a good time for if you're an indie developer to submit something so that your game can get put in front of some eyes and maybe put in front of some hands, too, so that they can play the demo and see if they like it. And you'll get a purchase. Discoverability has been one of those huge problems that Steam has had ever since they got rid of Greenlight. And this is one of the ways they've been going about trying to fix this. So, you know, you can if you're a dev who has been seeing lackluster sales on Steam, you can continue to complain or you can try to do something about it. <laughs> No, no, no. See, the the platform holders, they should do something for me. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the It's good. Demos are good. Uh, the, I like the whole thing around the uh, next fest. Uh, a lot of people seem pretty down on it, but demos are great. Demos are awesome. So, yeah, if you have a game that you want to put out, just make sure you have the demo ready before the... Um, what is it? Um... I think it's the demo. You only need to have it ready by October, but the registration, you need to get it when uh, Jordan said July 21st. And yep. uh, if you already had your demo in one of the previous next fests, because that's a sentence that makes sense. Uh, the <laughs> uh, There's a limitation that you can only have it on one. So the, the, the way around that, the loophole is you put out the demo and then you leave it up. That's it. <laughs> you won't get featured like, in the thing but it'll be there <laughs> remember the dark days when you could abuse the uh like coming out soon yeah, oh, yeah come, <laughs> a coming lot of people soon. did that <laughs> oh, i wasn't but hey yeah that's a good thing you can just leave the demo up and mm-hmm. that's a good thing because people will play your demos which yeah. let's, bring, <laughs> let's bring let's bring demos back please yes yeah. you you want people to not refund your game let people mm-hmm. actually try before they buy that's, that's a yep. fantastic way of doing it yeah oh man Pedro, explain to me why the New York Times is failing as a company. <laughs> well, well uh, the New York Times uh, d- does, they do um, paywall the, their website. It's not, you don't need to pay them. You just have to have an account. But yeah, it is. Uh, the thing that got me, though, is because um, it was the New York Times peak uh, mainstream media right there talking about the Steam Deck. It, it, they did a review of the Steam Deck. And they were positive about it. They, they were actually generally positive about it. They complained about the same things that everyone else did. Like, the battery of life is too short, and you can hear the fan. You've never used a laptop that made by Dell, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it, they were actually generally very, very positive. And they even bring up the fact that the software is where uh, the biggest gains are to be had, which... Another very big win for Linux, so very nice. <laughs> the real question here, though, is how do you actually install Times New Roman on the deck? Because installing fonts on Linux is fucking impossible. I don't know how to do yeah, it. Yeah, I can't guys. do it. No. Dude, um, you got to download like five or six GitHub pages. <laughs> right, man. Uh, I mean, j- j- joke aside, though, I mean, here's the thing. It seems that this is all pretty consistent with all the other feedback we've been hearing about the Steam Deck, the fan, battery life, screen... Windows compatibility, Destiny, easy and cheap, blah, 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 all that shit. I guess, but I I guess what we can conclusively say is that Valve has done a pretty all right job with the deck. I think, Mm -hmm. I I think we can pretty conclusively say that the Steam Deck has been a fairly successful experiment. Everyone uh, that I've seen, there's been like two or three cases of people who had a dud. They got delivered a dud that was that had serious that, actual problems that got kicked by the mailman yeah i've seen a couple of those there were a couple of those too yes but no the, the ones that just because it's a big you know production thing so yeah. there will be a few that are just that on yeah. arrival and there there were some people that were genuinely mad because they got a dud <laughs> well yeah i mean um, if, if i have to wait as long as yeah, something you know, i've learned from pedro mateus is if you complain about fan noise on your deck he's going to show up at your house and just go rah, rah, rah. <laughs> Him and Strider, my god. (laughs) 
it's that's the thing i like laptops and i've had many many laptops uh come through my hands especially in recent years so when i say that the steam deck is really not that loud trust me it really isn't (laughs) would you say that you are the steam deck's loudest fan oh no I'm definitely loud-ish, but they're, they're, again, it's a very popular device. People seem to really like it, and there's a much bigger audience out there. Because you want to compare the Steam Deck fan noise to a laptop fan noise. I need to come watch how you use the laptop, because apparently you hold it, like, right here in front of your face. (laughs) You don't hold the Steam Deck there, either. (laughs) I mean, I I, I hold laptops like this, but that's because I'm a stud. Uh, (laughs) Usually the Steam Deck is, like, here. (laughs) No, the fuck it's not. Yeah, it is. You, you play my, your Steam Deck with your arms fully extended. Bullshit. Yeah, because Something my arms flat. are resting on the desk or on the sofa or like wherever flat? I may happen I to mean, be. I mean, you have to sit below the surface to lay them out flat. Like no, they're resting on my knees or uh, the no, pillow oh, 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 or okay. whatever. Hey, Pedro, <laughs> what you need to do is start like hosting a deck yoga class so you can yes. control us. Like, let, let... <laughs> po- po- Take take on specific poses with your steam. And board. you know what? Your you can put in some earplugs if you're instead of the deck noise. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> shove, shove, yeah. shove, shove some decks in your ears. I don't know. So something you might be able to do uh, very soon is scan a QR code with your deck because Valve is working on a feature to log into Steam by scanning a QR code with the Steam mobile app to which I immediately go, is there anybody at Valve that still knows how to mess around with that code base? Or have they all <laughs> kind of moved on? I think maybe there's one guy left. He's like, hey, I should probably add that in there. But, yeah, no. you know, is it just going to be an update or a complete revamp of the mobile app? <laughs> well, it's, it's I mean, I mean, it's going to be a revamp of one page and then the rest of it is going to have the same old UI. <laughs> that, that's how Valve rolls. But, you know, here's the thing. Uh, Discord has had this for a while. It's super fucking convenient just to be able to say, like, hey, I have a device that's logged in all the time. My phone. Boop. Mm-hmm. Hey. Yeah, also uh, the Discord QR sign in is very, very nice. Valve, please. Yeah, do that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know especially uh, yeah. selfishly for Curator Connect. You know, whenever yeah. you get those emails, I got to actually <laughs> log into fucking Steam, and that's a pain in the butt. Oh, uh, you would be nice if they, um, with Curator Connect, if you could just possibly, I don't know, like throw us a bone and list the game. Yeah, to yeah. tell us what it is. Yeah, please. You don't even need to put like the picture of the game, just to have the name of the game. It's like you've been offered keys for this game. Right. Please, please. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> because. <sighs> I understand. There's not enough of not enough people getting free. I know Chris River free games to right. where you're trying to incentivize <laughs> us to go into our admin section and our curator connect. That's not the issue. This is just do it for us. Come on, we're the people who get to use it. Please, <laughs> yeah. yes, for, for the people who actually have to use the damn thing. Yeah. <sighs> oh man. Uh, retro people are playing. Uh, okay, Pedro, have you tried turning your deck? Have you? And a switch emu- I mean, allegedly ran a switch emulator on your deck yet. No. <laughs> You're dead to me, Pedro. Uh, <laughs> I did install um, RetroArch from, because it's on Steam, so I just installed that, and it works. So, I... <laughs> well, may- maybe, maybe, maybe you don't... Pedro like, the plague, anything interesting with his deck. like... <laughs> I, I mean, in, in, hey, in I've been playing Outward only. on the deck. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, maybe, maybe you're a bit of a deck rebel. You don't want people telling you what you can and cannot do with your property. You might want to install an emulator, and uh, Retro Deck is there to make that as easy as possible. They got a new version out, forty two, not four two dot two dot b. Ugh, too many dots. Um, but they've updated all the emulators to the latest versions. But please be aware if you're using the PCSX two standalone, no hotkey support for you. So if you're going to want to do any sort of like um, uh, soft resets or any sort of controller uh, reconfigurations, emulator setting stuff, you're going to have to do that shit through the menu. You're going to actually have to hit, hold down the steam button and go through the actual software menu. There's no hotkeys there. A little, little bit crappy, but it, it is what it is. I guess if you want to be able to play PlayStation, but I mean, games, they're absolutely doing their thing. You know, they make yeah. a mm-hmm. point to say, Hey, this is tailored for the deck with menuing system. Everything's tweaked for the deck. Uh, it's mm-hmm. supposedly the, you know, for them, the best that they can do is the most optimal experience they're able to provide in yeah. your Steam Deck. And it's relatively easy to get set up, right? It's just a flat pack, isn't it? Uh, I believe so. Uh, is it a flat pack or an app image? I There's remember. a flat pack, yes. That is okay. the one yes. that they're uh, actively uh, promoting. All right. Well, I mean, that it, makes sense. It's a Steam Deck. Yes. Wanna, <laughs> right. You, it, it uses flat pack. You probably want to use flat pack. 
surprise. Right? <laughs> the, but the, the the thing that uh, I think in, for in that respect, uh, emu deck. Um, are still doing the best is like fetching they basically do like the fetching the game art and everything else so that it matches the steam deck um the game mode and sets all of that automatically it's just that it requires some manual uh setup from the get-go which uh, yeah, you, you gotta actually start up all the emulators yeah. to create the, <sighs> the, the free structure but mm-hmm. I mean, again, my, minor gripe. You do it one right. time. Yeah, you do it's... that once, and then uh, you drop the files in there, and the script runs, and it goes, "Oh, hey, new things," and you get new things on the uh, the game. But mode. let's face it: if you're the type of person that uh, is going to, you know, hack your gaming device and install, wait, it comes with Linux, so you can do cool shit like that on it mm-hmm. without too much trouble. Good job, <laughs> Valve. Good job, Steam Deck. And don't listen to anyone. If you got a Steam Deck, break it. It's easy to unbreak software-wise. Have yeah. some fun with it. Live a little. <laughs> It's no. almost like there's just a regular hard drive in there that you can image. There's no read-only storage. Yeah, just don't do the modification on one because that. that yeah, no, don't don't do the twenty two forty two. That 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 will burn the charging IC, and then there will be no battery life for you. Could possibly significantly <laughs> shorten the life of your deck, and everyone wants a long-lived deck. Now, what about a long loop? One new game that caught my eye, and that's something I do each and every week, is, you know, usually sometimes like Wednesday or Thursday, I'll go to the Linux section, and I'll go over to the Linux store in Valve, and sort by new, and scroll down, and, you know, hey, Linux has made it. We get it just as much shovel where as Windows does this day, and you're like, oh, mm-hmm. fuck that, fuck that. Fuck Most that. of it is porn. <laughs> yeah, a lot of porn. A lot of porn. Click Yay, here. porn. This caught my attention. Uh, Loop, a vibrant contemplative puzzle game where you and companion travel through all right so ethereal ethereal temples man uh you find puzzle games lacking in that shit uh here's what i like it looks pretty i'm like okay this is nice maybe maybe we should and pedro's like yeah keys for loops in the list I'm like well okay <laughs> yes i too found it interesting so i emailed the person <laughs> My favorite thing, my favorite thing, uh, it's currently 20% off. Again, uh, stick around later in the show where we're going to be reviewing it. Uh, SteamOS requires uh, the minimum graphics card is seven years or less, uh, recommended <laughs> five years or less. So to me, that's a straight up damn challenge to find something. <laughs> oh, man. Get, 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 get some get some Matrox, like, yeah. server grade, like, multi-display 2D only shit. Yeah. I mean, if you get one of the higher end matrixes, you could probably run it. Yeah, <laughs> Pedro, I look forward to the uh, write up you're going to do on that. <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, no big kudos to uh, Pablo because he's the one that replied to my email. Uh, Hug the chili is the studio name. Love it. I actually do like the studio name very, very much. But uh, you thank you, chili? Pablo, for sending us keys. No, you eat the chili. You don't hug it. Yeah. You can hug you can hug it and then take a bite. Like, Not like unless a you're trying to get, coerce the chili into a false sense of security before you eat it. <laughs> yeah, like a vampire. Exactly. Comfort chili. Nom 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 nom. Yes. Vampires. Um Yes, vampires. Uh, vampire, vampire survivors. I was trying to come up with something and my brain was not working fast enough, so you get that nothing. Sucks. Yes, Vampire Survivors. Uh, it is a game that is massively popular. If you have no idea what it is, ha- where have you been? Uh, it is uh, it, it is currently publicly. It only says that it's for Windows and um, Mac because, yeah. Uh, it, but it, it does have a Linux version. If you opt into the beta branch, it does have a native Linux version. And they've just released a patch uh, not 8 not which uh, some, it's got some visual tweaks. Uh, some of the, you can see the GIF at the top of the uh, the article has the characters walking animations. That's different now. Uh, they have some new additions, some new uh, bits of content. Uh, they basically, if the roadmap that's currently going on on screen, you can see that they're just about done with everything that they have planned. There's just a couple of things missing. And th- like, the the teeny tiny little quality of life changes that they made for this version, I really appreciated the one that lets you filter out all of the stuff that you've already unlocked, so you can see the stuff that you actually need to do to get more characters or get more items or more stuff. That's good. That should have been there from the start because there's a lot of stuff to do in that game. <laughs> well, let's be honest. You can't just, can't complain about the price of it because yeah, I knew that it's that, cheap. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mir sent me a copy of it. Uh, like a month or two ago, when it was all the rage. And I'd heard, you know, uh, 
Matthew talk about it, Pedro talk about it. I didn't even know what it was. I just kept seeing Vampire Survivors. And uh, I played it. I didn't go into it with anything but curiosity. 100%. I didn't have any love or hate for it. And I pooped around for a little bit, probably like two or three minutes. And like, uh, yeah, I, I still don't understand how people get the addicted to this one. I'm like, <laughs> okay, you do you, but Instant gratification. Uh, uh, the rule set is very simple, and the items that you pick up, the effect is immediate for 99% of them. There's just a couple that it's something that happens when you level up or it's something that happens at specific times. But yeah, it it usually gives you that immediate sense, that immediate reward of everything that you do. So yeah, people I like want, that. <laughs> I want an immediate reward, I'll just get a sock full of mayo like a normal person, Pedro. I don't have to bring video games into that. that that's not immediate. <laughs> You gotta slap it on something Say first. I don't have them in hand, but I feel it. <laughs> All right. Well, coming up next, it's time to salivate. Well, not really salivate. Maybe, maybe just like lightly. Airbus 380 is coming in for a landing, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Intel cards, man, they're here. Good news, everyone. We actually ha uh, have some uh, stuff to talk about when it comes to Intel GPUs. They made some more laptop uh, versions. Don't worry. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, Jordan's going to have to tell you how you can... Uh, well, if you think it's a good idea after what you've just witnessed uh, to fund <laughs> this particular brand of insanity. I, li li listen, I, I'm, st I'm still like blown away by the quality of Ven's squirrel impression. That was like way better than I thought he was. It was going to actually be like practically a whisperer, man. Yeah. You like, are, are you secretly a squirrel? I, Have you been one I this entire time? I them from a distance to run through soup. Man. So it turns out Ven is secretly Squirrel Girl. If you want to fund his exploits in fighting Doctor Doom and Galactus and all the other people Squirrel Girl beats the shit out of, you can head on over to patreon.com slash linuxgamecast, become a Patreon. You get some cool stuff like uh, access to our Discord channel, which you can also get via subbing to us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash linuxgamecast. If you're not watching us live, you should do it. It's fun. Uh, you can get access to the uh, show notes. Uh, you can buy your way on the show. How many podcasts do you listen to, Jordan? How many podcasts? Regularly or just yeah, in general? Like um, weekly. Weekly? Mm -hmm. mm, maybe two or three. Two or three? Do any of those do it live? Uh, they do, and I never catch it because I don't know what time they actually record. This, <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> so it's that. But I know with me, sometimes, because it's different shows. Some shows I want to catch live, and we think everybody shows up for the experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, But there are other shows that I'm like, yeah, I don't like it live. I want it prepackaged. And for, for for me, I, I I am big in the camp, and I know a lot of people are. Uh, of I need like four to six hours of just constant background conversation, just to just to fill the void, which mm -hmm. you can get. Uh, you know, subbing to our Patreon. We actually actually we have an entire YouTube channel with the long long version. Yes. The <laughs> you can get the the bigger, four hour longer, streams. Uncut. Yeah. Let's <laughs> If you want to check that out. Um, but yeah, that's all That's all supported by y'all on Patreon. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Uh, we got store as well. Store.linuxgamecast.com. You can buy filthy Linux Gamecast merch for your clean, clean body or clean Linux Gamecast merch for your filthy body. Um, Just use it as a towel. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I would, rub I would yourself in it. <laughs> I would be lying if I haven't used my LGC shirt at least once as a, as a sweat towel. That's, that's fine. You, you could probably you, catch you a squirrel it. with it. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I mean, maybe a chipmunk. I don't know about a squirrel. Squirrels are wily. Uh, and we got uh, we got wish zones. If you head on over to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support button. Uh, you can buy stuff for uh, Ben. You can buy stuff for Pedro, or you can be like Oil of Hope, who bought me a Ooh. fucking fog machine. <laughs> Serves you hey. right, motherfucker. You put yeah, it on I put there. I put it on week. there, and yeah, last week, and you know, oh, 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 love hope. He sent he sent us uh, he sent me a little note. If you send us stuff off our wish zones, you can also send us notes, and we'll have to read them online, uh, live on air, like this one. It was when you could smoke in all the places you went on buses, trains. We sat and smoked plumes of smoke lifting from our seats. We were all smokers. We shared. We took it in together. On planes and buses. I don't know. Is is is, is that a reference? It sounds uh, like some sort of. That sounds like poetry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, man. It's a haiku. Hold, hold that note up just a little bit. No, no, no. Hold it. Hold it back closer. Down. 
Yeah, it was creating a bit of a glow yeah, you on clean, your shirt. Clean, clean that lens a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you got a smudge. Beauty shot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, whatever. I, re- I, re- I read the note. Thank you, all of hope. I got to fucking buy some vape juice now and s- mm-hmm. figure out where to put this fucking thing. <laughs> this, 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 this is his passport like four years late. So anyway. <laughs> So we'll get back into vaping. And, uh, no, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use it. I'm just gonna hold it right up to my mouth. And, oh, that's the good shit. Mango, mango Kush. Oh, fuck. Uh, we got, we got, we got some other people. We got to thank. We got to thank Basil for resubbing on Twitch thirty times, for thirty months, as well as Nubbin who did it for twenty six whole months. That's more than one year and less than three years. Hey, truly, truly generous people. Thank you. If you want to pop in and come play with us, we do game nights. Uh, Jordan does stuff on Thursdays, but I think you're kind of tied into your um, RPG right now, right? A, 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 a little bit, but uh, if you if you if you want to if you want to hang around, shit post or tell me what I should do because I'm always taking input from the crowd for conversation options. Uh, yep. <laughs> and I always try to pull people in on Tuesdays and Fridays. We do a little bit of arcade racing and with the Track Mania, which uh, soon we're probably going to be mixing up one of those days with the uh, golf. Tour turbo smashy thing but more on that when it actually gets released because i want to play something from you know kind of the start and that's going to be an early access for a while it's going to uh, be fun you want to play something from you know this decade uh not really no, no. <laughs> just hopefully something that uh epic doesn't swoop in and buy them out right and then everyone gets shafted oh man what what if, what if, what if track media 2 stadium goes epic only for some reason <laughs> oh, see they're even no man it's, it's ubisoft they, they don't even allow it on steam oh. the new track media it's, you gotta create like the ubisoft uh, thing and you gotta do, go through origin yeah yeah or uh, you play, you play, or whatever it is. Yeah, uh, Ubisoft Connect. They changed the name. It's Ubisoft Connect now. <laughs> it, it, it's it's always gonna be you play. My it God. is always gonna be the not Steam. But we thank you, each and every one of you, making this possible for as long as we've done it. Loud, live, independent, ad free, and unless you're watching on YouTube, but you probably already have an ad blocker because I look at our like demos. Everyone knows, like, yeah, all you, everyone has an ad blocker on, which I don't blame you. YouTube I, I, also I feel bad for people who are watching YouTube with ads. Like, God, that's how, how do you live? Well, uh, most people on their phones. Yeah. <laughs> two things <laughs> on an aside, YouTube red, YouTube music, whatever. It's one of those two, but I don't get ads and uh Twitch turbo or natural, yeah. whatever they call it mm-hmm. this week. Which, it's, it's, Twitch. It's, it's YouTube premium now, much like you play. Okay. They the name. Listen, as long as my check keeps cashing, and uh, again, there is one for Twitch, believe it or not. Twitch hides it because they don't want anyone to use it, and all the ads are gone. You'll never have to worry about them again. And it's well, like, you got to pay extra for your Twitch Prime, whatever. No. They, they, they got a different <laughs> one now? No, you just get the Twitch Turbo. I mean, if you want Prime or something like that for whatever rewards and benefits you can get, you can do that on top of it, but it gets mm. rid of the ads across the board, and it's like uh. nine bucks a month. That's not bad if you're, if you're doing a lot of Twitch watching, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I, I'm like... <laughs> to watch twitch in the background noise anyway what we want to get our hands on is something you might know of this lad he's been around for a minute ryan shrout says Shrout. i got my hands on the retail version of whatever intel arc 380 photon 6g 06 uh oc uh it's only available in china right now yes we've been over that a couple of times uh you're not gonna see it locally the quality of course is exceptional i don't know man he seems to like intel for some reason uh main Stream 1080p medium gaming DX12 ultimate, but yeah, I know <laughs> through all that, stick with me. AV1 hardware and code is going to be on the basic bitch Intel card. Yes, please. 100%. Into the unknown, into the unknown, yes, <laughs> into the unknown, dude. Uh, I, I want to unknow all the things because the marketing, <laughs> if the scuttlebutt about the prices these are going to be sub 200 bucks and i already said them pre pre super shows and is uh if they come out under 200 bucks like 150 175 i mean i'm just gonna buy one to have as a fuck around thing and uh play around with the av1 encoder yeah mm-hmm. no if, if the price is right it might be worth a purely worth a curiosity fuck right it's got two fans on it and it's bus powered yeah it, what that we got? one oh, has man. a uh an extra eight pin power connector at the top okay. there <laughs> so we got three display ports and one hdmi i'm assuming that's all um that's pretty that's, standard. that's what video cards have nowadays yes yeah i know that but i'm assuming that it's all going to do 4k it's not like no this one <laughs> yeah it, well, it's probably I mean, hdmi 2 or 2.1 <laughs> I, I mean it's rated for 4k 60 it's going to do 4k 28 
but you know, <laughs> that is what it is. Okay, and we can see laying on his desktop, it does not directly attempt to attack the keyboard or the mm-hmm. mouse. Well, left mm-hmm. alone, stationary. Okay, but can you hot plug it into a running system? Motherfucker, you got two. You can send one down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Ryan's going for uh, the SLI. <laughs> is, 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 this, is this Fortnite's? I don't know. You know what? Considering this is I running under Windows PUBG. and it's not crashing, that's impressive. Yeah, so that's fair, given, given what we've been hearing so far. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what do we think, gentlemen, outside of, again... This is not something that you would necessarily, or not intelligently, not willingly in a market where you could literally buy anything else. But for an encoder card, a fuck around card, or like spare HTPC, it makes sense. Especially that, like, for that. Dedicated encoder. Uh, yeah. Even if you have just the one box you use for streaming, you use a GPU to play the game, and then you get the Intel one for the AV1 streaming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Do you have yeah. any thoughts on it whatsoever, Jordan? I mean, like I said, it might be worth a curiosity fuck. Um, I don't, I don't know. Ho- hopefully, by end of year, we're going to start seeing some here more we go performance. Asking real questions. Our What's man the hash deep. rate for Ethereum? <laughs> yeah. uh, the correct response to that is go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, fuck you and fuck off. <laughs> uh, DGPU, IGPU are going to be supported. Uh, uh, yeah, Do- the, the the Dolly <laughs> Mini version, of course. <laughs> so yeah as with all things intel and uh discrete gpu are related this thing might as well not fucking exist because <laughs> intel is not saying anything with updating they said by the end of summer mm-hmm. which looks it's like a, it's coming australian summer no, no, so no. Uh, no, Pedro March, Mateus, next year dare, do not besmirch <laughs> intel they did not say what year <laughs> They clearly left that open <laughs> maybe they're gonna release it after summer glow dies you know the end of summer Oh man! Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Safe, listen, listen, listen there, there's a couple ways you can interpret that statement, right? You, you, you never know. Intel, Intel, they're they're wily coyotes, uh, but they're not very loud. Loud like not like Godot. Anyways, they got uh, they got a new update uh, for Godot 4.0. This is preview. Um, it's only going to be available in alpha one and later. But fog volumes, they're here. Uh, you can now instead of having fog everywhere, aka like Silent Hill mode, mode uh, you can have uh, boxed or enclosed fog uh, volumes. You can have boxes, ellipsoids, cylinders, and cones. So yeah, if and they have a couple uh, visual demos here to show how the fog works. You know. It's always nice to have in your 3D games if you were you mm-hmm. know, making a Silent Hill clone or you just want to yeah. like obscure some <laughs> level stuff so that you can have some time to load it in, much like Silent Hill. <laughs> I very much look forward to some game developer like going ham with the brand new different volumes of volumetric fog that you can have in Godot now. I, I no actually machine. want to see that. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah yes. they, they have their own fog machine. You can do it in software. You don't need to have Olav Hope buy you one. Uh, yeah. I mean, okay, I hundred percent. I didn't know Godot couldn't do volumetric fog. It could do volumetric fog, but it was a was it constant. Uh, it was a constant volume of fog. Now you can actually set different volumes for like different bits. <laughs> that that's the big one. That looked like a finger. Yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> it looked that's like something else, not a finger, but yes. That's a penis. <laughs> Giant sausage. Sausage finger. Welcome right. back to Stephen Sausage Roll 2 in 3D. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. I got a bunch of stuff. Uh, support them if you possibly can, because um, that that's really the only truly open, viable open source engine that's, that's available right, right now. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't have uh, a like, gotcha like at some a, point in the contract. An actual like mm-hmm. Libre open source engine, yeah. Right. So yeah, give it a look. Some things are coming out of it. No. Not not on your Xbox though. Well, I mean, I'm probably gonna make an <laughs> Xbox game with um Good Home. But I might want to play some of my Xbox stuff uh with XCloud, because I've heard <laughs> XCloud gonna things. give it to you? I was gonna go with that joke, but I've genuinely heard like mediocre like Hey, it works, but it's never worked that great. It's going to give it to you at 720p, maybe. (laughs) It's never worked that great on Linux. Functionality is fine, but the image quality has been a bit uh, hazy, foggy, you might say. Mm. And I read across this post on Reddit from RxCloud. 
It's posted by Spiritual Ad 2806. A few days ago, I noticed when I play on Linux, Ubuntu Manjaro, it's a weird mix. Uh, the image quality is lower than when I play on Windows. All right. So I decided to do a test using the Edge browser, user agent switcher, changed it to Windows 10. Bam. Incredible as it may seem. Not really. Uh, it sounds like Microsoft being Microsoft. <laughs> you get a high quality goodness um, as Windows without the clarity boost turned on. So, yeah, sounds they, like Microsoft being Microsoft. They, they just can't fucking help themselves, man. Um, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Ch- I mean, yeah, obviously it's just as simple as changing your user agent string to get the high quality shit. Um, and also they, they've confirmed the reverse on Windows. If you change your user agent to Linux. Uh, yeah, it also does gives you the reduced qualities. But you know, Microsoft loves Linux. You guys, <laughs> they, 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 it's their favorite thing in the world. What if, what if I try to crack that bad boy open on like I don't know, sailfish? Oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> good luck. Well, uh, it'll probably sail Linux too. Something uh, that will run sailfish. Yeah. Sailfish the, is not Linux <laughs> at all. Yeah, no, but it is. Uh, it, it depends on. Uh, it seems to be reading the Linux bit off of the user agent. And um, Ars Technica actually did a bit of digging and some uh, speculating that uh, maybe it's because uh, if you look at the user agent string on Android, it also has Linux. So maybe what Microsoft is doing is, oh, if it says Linux, it's probably Android. Probably a safe assumption to make, given that Android is the most used platform. Uh, fair enough. Uh, so, yeah, if it says Linux, it's Android, so just blanket treat everything like a mobile device with a very expensive data plan and send them their low bitrate version. Which, if that's the case, you know, Henlon's razor still stands, never a tribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity. I, I mean, so, it's, it's, it's not like Microsoft has the resources to be able to identify, you know, what... what, what oh, they do, but this is cheaper. <laughs> I don't know. It's Microsoft. They might have forgot that they made it a thing. Like, wait, what? We didn't block that? Ah, wait. <laughs> to you the know, you never know. Um, what do we have up next? Oh, not a Steam Deck. No, mm-hmm. not a Steam Deck. This is the Enbernick. I keep trying to I keep trying to say the name wrong, but it's Enbernick, not Ambernick. Uh they they have a uh Win six thousand device coming out, supposedly, that is gonna be about three hundred bucks. Uh designed to run Windows ten or Steam OS. And uh, it is going to be one of these uh, new handheld PC competitors that are coming out in the wake of the Steam Deck. Um, Baby Budget is running AMD Silver 3020E or in a Vega 3. So that's, that's pretty anemic. Um, you're not going to be able to run like any sorts of games you would Aww, expect to run on it. the Steam Deck. But, you know, if you're doing Into the Breach, Vampire Survivors, that kind of crap, maybe, uh, maybe you will have a fun time. Oh, wow, that almost looks as bad as The Witcher 3 on the Nintendo Switch. It, you are going to be looking at 720p 30 on the lowest settings for most of the games. That's uh, so the Vega calibre. 3. Yeah, the Vega 3 is the same one that I have on the uh, Dell 5495 that I put together off eBay. And yes, very, very limited in what it can do. It's like the three compute units. That's uh, where the three in the name comes from. So that's, yeah, that it's cheap, stock? though. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's dirt cheap. And I, I, th- I think that's kind of what they're going for is like, we have Steam Deck at home. Mm hmm. 256 uh, M.2 SATA, 8 gig, DDR4, 2400. Um, it, it comes with a box. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do like, though, how, uh, uh, just as an aside, anything that's like, ah, built for SteamOS, meaning, A, we're using Radeon graphics, because apparently that shit just works under Linux. We don't have to make drivers. Uh, <laughs> by now... I guess a lot of companies are holding off. Plus, you're still dealing with um, component shortage and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. there's definitely going to be some big players. Maybe they're just sitting because, you know, nobody except Valve knows how many Steam Decks that they've sold. We can mm-hmm. assume that since people are still very much waiting to get theirs that they've already mm-hmm. paid for, it's quite a few. And, uh, and I don't think they're done with uh, no. the first week of orders yet. They finished the first day of orders. Oof. But yeah, it's uh, it's taking a while. <laughs> People really want that deck. It's it's kind of popular. It's kind of popular. So, and, you know, I, mean, I understand you got to make something that's going to be able to run. But yeah, this at that price point, I would say one ninety nine 
if I was going to do the, because here's the AliExpress thing. If anything's wrong with it, you're just out that fucking money, man, because it'll cost more than that with shipping it yeah. back. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And has <laughs> all that. And uh, I, I want something, you know, from, be it from NVIDIA or whatever. I, I want, like, options for the deck. Mm-hmm. I kind of more decks, <laughs> maybe not physical devices by this point, but definitely some pre announcements from whoever. If it's like Dell's going to make or Alien, the Alien deck, yeah. I, I, I think I think Alienware is going to be staying the fuck away from that. It's got some they, got, they, on it. they 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 got burned pretty bad the last time. Yeah, they had the Razer blade a switch blade the switch blade that was a tablet with two little uh <laughs> controllery things hanging out the yeah, side nintendo actually let them keep the name for that though because that seems like something nintendo would uh, this was long before uh ah. the nintendo had the switch the, the this was well, 2011 they do file <laughs> trademarks several years in advance though so you never know. Mm-hmm. who knows who knows yeah you can just buy a switch uh <laughs> That's what I did. Uh, you know what? Maybe in this interesting future, if you happen, if you wanted to play your x86 games on an ARM processor, you know, maybe you don't need a x86 in your deck in the future. Mm-hmm. Possibly. Um, that 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 is the dream. And there were a couple of projects that were very much trying to do that. Specifically, Box 86 and Box 64 for 32 and 64 bits uh, applications, respectively. But the two didn't really play well together. I should know. I've been trying. So these uh, brand of uh, this particular brand of insanity, FEX twenty two oh seven, is um, well. The, the they have sort of kind of accomplished that. It's still very very early. Uh, this comes from uh, FEX Emu. So uh, go have a look uh, at that. But yeah, they've basically created the dream, which is a bit of software that can do your box 86. So let's say you run Steam, which is a 32-bit application, uh, and then you use it to launch a 64-bit game without having to then launch box 64 on top of it, which going from ARMHF for box 86 to uh, ARCH64 for box 64... That doesn't work very well. No, <laughs> so, no yeah. it doesn't. <laughs> uh, they actually have very much uh, accomplished the dream. They have some actual file system and syscall emulation and e- e- virtualization, effectively, but w- w- with very minimal overhead. So, yeah, get get your uh, your Pinebook Pros out and uh, try it. Uh, yeah, if have, you oh, as somebody who knows about this. <laughs> Bro, the most about it with a Pinebook Pro that you're suggesting other people do. Have you tried it? Not yet. No. All right. <laughs> when yeah, I saw I, that bit of news was yesterday. <laughs> so yeah, no, I haven't had time. Uh, <laughs> it does. It does even have support for Proton if you're using uh, the Soldier Runtime, which is pretty neat. Yes, you have to uh, opt into the beta on the Soldier Runtime, though. Sure. Uh, <laughs> this is not going to let you run Elden Ring at 60 frames a second, though. You might be able to play some of the same games you might think of playing on the Embernick Win 600, though. Here's the thing, though, man. I, I'm sitting there, like, you know, I just take one of my, like, new M2 things that I just have laying around the house, put some Linux on it, and all of a sudden shit gets a little more interesting, doesn't it? A mm-hmm. little bit. I mean, out of uh, curiosity, I don't mean, like, usability. I'm like, scream. Good. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually do need to uh, take out the um, because I have a half working solution, which is using QEMU for uh, Box 86, and then it's using Box 64 natively because I have uh, Manjaro ARCH 64 installed. So, yeah. Multilib does not less theory, more doing exist. Mu- <laughs> mu- 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 multi arch, multilib. This is this Kill. goes beyond. This yes. goes beyond multilib because you can at least like try to run thirty two bit code on a sixty four bit processor if it's mm-hmm. x eighty six. Arm, <laughs> get fucked. Nope. All right. Well, coming up next, it's a pime teradox snake. We're throwing chairs at a loop. A pime teradox. A pime teradox. Full of pimes. <laughs> Welcome back! We're here doing our loop-de-loop at the Chairquisition, where we go through a game. We install it on our three different Linux distributions with very different hardware nowadays. Uh, and we tell you what we thought about it, uh, and if we had fun, um, how it worked. And we give it an objective rating based on our four ch- lawn chair system. One chair means that it's trash. 
Four chairs means it's amazing. This week, we're taking a look at Loop by Hug the Chili, done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about $9.99 US. What is it? Loop is a vibrant, contemplative puzzle game where you and your companion travel through a mysterious ethereal temple. During the journey, you will traverse many riddles and face the ultimate enigma. Can the loop, can the endless loop be broken? We got to thank Hug the Chili, uh, Pop, what was it? Pablo? Or someone else? Yes, so, Pablo. Pop, Pablo. <laughs> uh, Pablo from Hug the Chili for sending us some keys for this over Curator Connect. Thank you. And, hey, I get to go first this time. Yeah, so, you know. on Fedora, 35, 64 You're not, bit, Jordan. I'm, <laughs> I'm not? Oh, we're, who am I? Monster. Ah! What are you? I think um, this is a squirrel. La, la, la. Skin, I'm, I'm a skin changer, man. That's how I do. Uh, yeah, so uh, on Fedora 35, because I'm a lazy fuck 64-bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, it launches out of the box, holds 68 UHD full screen. I didn't bother to stick it in windowed mode. Um, you can pl- Control-wise, you can play this with one hand. Um, it was originally designed for mobile. You can tell because the tutorial has you swipe across the stre- screen to move the camera, and I'm like, okay, I'll... I'll- play along and fiddle with buttons on my controller. Uh, and lo, lo and behold, it, it works. You can also just use the mouse and tap. It's fine. Um, the soundtrack is kind of all right. Knock off Enya music. I do like the visual style, though. It's very striking. It's very ethereal, as the description said. I like the minimalist, minimalist approach, and I think it works for the style of game. I'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, but it is very Unity looking with all that lighting and textures, though. That very clearly made in Unity. Fun was, well... I beat it in two hours with one generous bathroom break. The story was interesting enough and the delivery was stylistic enough that it kept me mostly interested, but man, does it drag. It is a very long two hours and the game design does its damnedest to pad out the experience. You can see the how slow people move and drag and walk and run. In the, if you're watching the video version, it is very, very slow, especially after they do the, um, the ghost and goblins time loop thing, but uh, I'll <laughs> leave that for later. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the but the story is nothing like super groundbreaking, and when you only really have the level and game design, a couple cinematics, and maybe a mural here or there, you don't want to go overboard with subtlety, so it makes sense. And it's very well convey- conveyed, and as an art piece, this is very, very good. But as a fun game that's fun to play and, like, enjoyable... Not so much. I would classify this more as like a narrative experience. The puzzles aren't really puzzles. They require minimal brain power. The worst thing you got to do is realize, hey, I got to press all the buttons to figure out what they do before I, you know, commit to a course of action. Because otherwise I'm going to be spending time uh, doing some loopy loops. And there's 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 achievements for doing puzzles the wrong way because they make mm-hmm. you like have to. Yeah, there, there's the whole thing about that. Uh, also. I wish there was a run button. The movement is just so painfully slow, especially when, you know, you have to go across a fairly large level for this game, at least. It just takes a good long while, and I don't like it. Uh, There's also some pathing bugs with your buddy as well. I had to restart a level because he got stuck on a platform due to being unable to rise high enough. And also, uh, if you if you played the game, you thought, wow, this is really great. I want to play this again. You have to manually delete your save file because otherwise it auto saves just before the final mission. And you can only play that. Um, so I'll say, uh, as a, like I said, as an art piece, this is very good. But this is a show about video games. And video games should be entertaining. I, I, f- fun, engaging. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. That's that's kind of broad. But for me, I'm going to give it two chairs. It, it does what it tries to do, but it's maybe a little too slow. Yeah, I can absolutely see that. Uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the uh, Radeon uh, RX 6700 XT, it uh, only drops from uh, 144 when it's loading new things. It launches out of the box both here and on the deck, and on the deck it holds 40 or 60 or whatever your refresh rate is. It's not a very demanding game. Uh, and the uh, the mouse, when I first started the game, didn't work at all, but they released a patch on Thursday uh, that fixed that. Uh, controller worked just fine. Um, Thursday or Friday, one of these days. Uh, the controller was just fine, so that's what I used to play. Uh, the graphics, uh, they seem to have taken some inspiration from Journey for the uh, the character designs, clearly. Uh, but, uh, you know, I won't stop believing. Not that Journey. Uh, and the thing that got me was um, no cloud saves, because I started playing this on this box, and then I went to test on the deck, and I had to start from the beginning. So, oh, okay, that that that's not very helpful, but uh, 
As for the fun, it is a very simple game. Even after this tutorial bit, if you're watching the video version, when the master figure goes away, none of the puzzles were difficult in any way. It's, it's got the same problem as the Talos Principle did. The puzzles are not difficult. They're just they just start to feel like a chore. The The more you progress, the more of a chore it feels like the puzzles are becoming. And yeah, it, it is very much the case in Loop. And the Talos Principle, you had the story. That was the only thing that motivated me to keep playing as long as I did. Here, the story is very much conveyed by your actions and what your characters are doing. So, okay, I, I, you have... I guess if you have to do the chores, you better have something to do, and the narrative motivation is very much there. The one thing that I will praise this game for is uh, a lot like, for example, Half-Life 2, or that first time that you play through a Souls game, that you don't know that the uh, story of the world is being told in the item descriptions, it does a very good job of showing rather than telling. You can very much uh, figure out everything you need to do just by playing through it. It is... Uh, there's no text on screen at any point. There's just a symbol here and there, and there's these uh, little moments where the characters look at a wall and f it's sort of a foreshadowing as to what's coming uh, very, very soon. It is, it, it's very good at doing the showing, but not having um, cloud saves and the puzzles being a chore, those two are very much negatives in my part. Maybe a young child would appreciate it, because I will give it two chairs. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, spoilers. How did it run over on Debian 11 on my 1920X with an NVIDIA 3060? Well, windowed and full screen, at least at a window mode. So there's a chance somebody might stream it. That's good to see. Uh, when it comes to your options, you got those two Unity, like, all ah, right, this is a mobile port. Clue number one right there. You have a uh, sound and other sound. Alt-Tab will sometimes lose the controller because I was kind of looking for some other stuff to do while I was playing the game. Because you can kind of just play it with one stick. More on that, I love it. As uh, Pedro pointed out, your save file does not transfer from Proton to Linux native. So if you're playing this on your Windows PC and you want to play it on your Steam Deck, get wrecked. Start from the beginning. And, you know, I, I just really wish that, you know, cloud saves, they, they just weren't so wicked expensive to implement. And, you know, just incredibly difficult. Just poor documentation on how to set that up for games. It's at dark times that we live in. Hashtag sarcasm, but let's talk about the fun for this. I mean, you're watching the video. Go check out the video. At least go check out the web zone. Because the only thing I'm thinking for the entirety of my playthrough was this would be a thousand percent better if it had online multiplayer. And that that's probably not what you were going for right there. Right at the beginning, you got the NPC that you're following around, you're chasing around. And it takes about a solid 40 minutes to get through that escort mission because uh, escort mission is not the right word, but you get the idea of what I'm going for. But then it's time for some solo brain scratching or so I thought, because, you know, I'm not particularly clever, but every puzzle I encountered probably took 10, possibly 15 seconds. I'm kind of highballing on that to just figure out my brain mates and executing that. Well, <sighs> That time was doubled because you got to wait on the NPC. And when you're playing by yourself, you've got to do everything yourself and run back and forwards back. It's like a mini fetch quest hell. And your character does move at the speed of smell. That's not really great. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, this is a 99 cent mobile game. So you really should keep that in mind. You know, loop, I think it works best in small doses. When you need to kill time, you don't really need to stress your brain meets or just like, ah, oh, it's picked something up. Oh, okay, move back, you know, waiting on the bus or something like that. Unfortunately, I don't think this translates well into a sit-down gaming experience on the desktop at all, at least for me. Then again, if you added some extra bang, a little bit of pizzazz for that $9.99, that extra $9, say online co-op, well, you know what? You might have something. But as it stands, you know, it's a functional Linux native game. It's got some problems. It's got some issues. But, um... I mean, it works. <laughs> That's not a 
Uh, but if you can get through it in two hours, there's zero replayability to this, right? There, there, there is none. Uh, you might miss an achievement or two, uh, but beyond that, like. And this not, is the not, point not where the master figure just fucks off out of the map. You can see him run right off the map there, and I'm going, "What the hell, dude?" Well, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's 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 funny because like I had I had the same thought as you, Ben, because you know, uh, much much like Pedro, I saw a lot of like Journey as an inspiration in this game, and mm-hmm. Journey is very much a multiplayer game. Um, and part of part of it is like you cannot communicate with your fellow player. You have to kind of figure out new ways to communicate and figure it out on your own. Here, um. I'll just say with minimizing spoilers, it doesn't super apply as well because the positions swap at some point. And I get uh, what you're saying. We yeah. talked about this in the pre pre super shows yeah. and, and in between the breaks. But what I'm saying yeah. is in order for this to become a marketable product, you probably just got to scrap the after part and focus on a two player, multiplayer. Yeah. Uh, like puzzle solving experience that would at least make it like engaging and fun and have some life to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will. I, I'll. I'll agree with that. Like, I want. I want to give this game the benefit of the doubt because, like, there's clearly work put into it. But, like, yeah, it's it's just not fun as as like, as a piece of entertainment media. Even with your generous um, bio break, you can cruise through this game in under two hours. Yes, absolutely. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, and, that's and, and, very very short for 10 bucks <laughs> and the and like on honestly the final 10 minutes is like a or the final five minutes is a cinematic so like yeah it's uh. un, under under two hours of actual gameplay um yeah i i feel like if we're gonna have loop two or loop point five or loop something something loop in this, together in, in the spiritual <laughs> successor yeah a lot uh, a lot harder puzzles actually put your character in danger because there is a boss in this game mm. that cannot hurt you at all uh. so it 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 yeah it there there, there needs to i i understand like adding stakes kind of goes against the vibe of the game but you know again there there is that fine line you need to walk between like narrative experience and actual entertaining game like media that products. it's kind of because i can see everyone's like well fuck all of you you don't understand the story i'm not a way all of us we get the story and we can appreciate the story and yeah. what, what's being put on there what we're saying is it doesn't translate into a marketable product on the desktop yeah not for any kind of long run no (laughs) not for ten dollars if this was like two dollars sure absolutely um but yeah 9.99 and for that runtime people are just gonna ask for a refund so yeah and and again it's hard not to like i absolutely see this working on mobile i'm like yeah i get it because you pick it up because even the way the game is structured and staged it was mobile first like hey this is something yep. you can pick up and you can cut through one of these and you know like three to five minutes then it saves and it goes on you're like hey i can pick this up waiting on the boss dude but as a prolonged like again you can cut through in two hours like ah uh, yeah and I, I wasn't even really trying it was right. just like mm-hmm. it got to a point where it's like oh i'm basically i looked at the achievement list and i'm like oh i'm basically near the end of the game i should just finish it <laughs> And like basically yeah. I was reading kernel documentation on modules and loading them. Yeah. So while I was playing the game with my one thumb occupied, it, it's, it, it was <laughs> yeah, like, okay, no, it, I just it, need it to was, do this and this and this. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was very much like, <laughs> yeah. next. Yeah. The, 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 the one other gripe I brought it up in the pre, pre super season, but I'll bring it here. The game is very, very picky about uh, alignment. Sometimes it cares. Sometimes it'll just nudge things on its own. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to see a little bit better consistency there, game. Mm. Yeah. All right. Fair well, enough. Coming up next, we talk more about Cursed Fuck Off and Die Edition. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. The hate mail segment. <laughs> I think that's it. That just about wraps up. Yet one more uh, LGC Weekly. Thank you very much for sticking us all the way through. Um, you probably Sticking Yes. <laughs> sticking sticking it us. all the way through. We're, we're the sticking donuts of podcasting. Sticking us all the way through. Oh, all boy. All the way. Oh, no. <laughs> if you'd like to uh, let me know uh, where I can stick it, please go on to LinuxGameCast.com. Hit the contact button. There's a form you got to fill. LGC Weekly is the show that you want to send your hate mail to. And uh, you should absolutely get in touch. We probably said something that annoyed you or something that will annoy you at some Ooh. point in the future. That is, uh, that's valid. It's, we at, at least I know that I'm prone to pissing people off. So he thinks he is. He's got like his own <laughs> fanfic. He's like, man, everybody's angry. 
I, I, I get like weirdo novels written at me when people are mad at me, though. So, <laughs> you know what? If somebody's not pissed off, you're not doing your job. Uh, we didn't piss anybody off this week, though. No, 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 no. no. We, we didn't. We have. Yeah, uh, we actually got the, some agreement. <laughs> yeah, from uh, was four, four, from uh, Fortato, and they say mm-hmm. I use Solus and I play Cursed, Fuck Off, and Die all the time. It's strange, but super fun. Proton has been outdoing itself in the past few weeks. Black Ops Two, Paladins, and much more work great out now out of the box, including the brand new Cycle Frontier, which has a massive population. It runs great. Um, yeah, I guess he was talking about, uh, Black Ops 2 and Paladins, because Cursed Fuck Off and Die are, is, uh, is, uh, Linux native. So, yes, yeah. that was actually a native. That's kind of one of the requirements for the chairs is, you know, Linux game. Yes, but <laughs> the reason I bring this up is exactly that point. Because we discovered, even when we were playing, um, Cursed in the after shows, and there is some, can be some confusion about, do I run it with Proton or do I run native? <laughs> you just I, click install and run whatever it now, defaults to. Okay, now you say that, Pedro. Here's, flash forward here's five years. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. I'm talking about two fucking day. Because a lot of the stuff you're going to install, stuff that you've already bought in your library, is not going to be Linux native. So you're going to, like, if your first experience, especially if you're playing around with your Steam Deck, you're like, yeah, I just, yeah, it's going to do its thing and I do the Proton. So you're going to be in the habit of just downloading a game, buying a game, especially a free game. Wait, muscle memory, right? Like, but did, did go to Proton. Is, yeah, I think it, on it, I think on the Steam Deck, you just get the Proton version right away, right? Yes, uh, on the Steam Deck, Valve, uh, at least for the games that have been verified or or ha- they have checked through them, they will have set whether it runs with Proton or whether it runs native. Most of the ones that have native versions that they've set to run with Proton are the ones that don't work or that say completely ignore the. Um, vertical sync settings that you have set up which that's a big no-no for something that has a very short battery life <laughs> yeah and, and to, to your point of like games that don't work anymore i think yeah maybe maybe in like five six years we may have to play cursed fuck off and die via proton if like people are still actually playing it if it's still up yeah, <laughs> yeah. If it's still up if they keep working on it does uh what type of, how, how, how good is the screen it's not oled is it no it's just ips Do it's a think- 60 hertz ips screen do you think they'll have like a bonus soda with some bonus cost version with an OLED? Boled. That 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 was one of the things I suggested for the uh, the Steam Deck too. It's like a slightly uh, lower power consumption screen, like an OLED that can actually turn off the dark uh, LEDs. Mm-hmm. That'd be good. <laughs> what about uh, like a six inch smaller a baby deck? It's like a baby's hand holding an apple. Yeah. You probably need to compromise somewhere else, like the size of the battery. <laughs> I just want a Steam Deck that is like all battery. It's like a man-sized battery and like a tiny little Steam Deck, just because I, I don't want to charge my shit. Oh, the big uh, chonker with the big battery. Yes. Yeah, man. That, that's when the Steam releases the clamp-on controllers for your laptop. No, I, I, want, I want like the proton pack on the back, like the 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 the, the deep cycle marine battery. <laughs> just care falling that shit around. Yeah. The uh man i wish here's some feedback i want because we know a lot of you have a steam deck and some of you leave the house so (laughs) i'm curious if you're out and about do you take the steam deck with you and have you run into like uh range anxiety have you thought like whoa nope i'm out what (laughs) i think it's never been outside it has. Uh, when I did the Saturday work, I took it with me because I was just sitting around uh, imaging laptops. So I was like, "All right." I, I mostly know played Vampire Survivor. Ever time. seen sunlight? <laughs> uh, I, it hasn't been like proper outside. I've never taken it out of the uh, little carry case outside. Outside. You know. <laughs> you know. You know what the the accessory I want for my Steam Deck is one that like makes the shell color like that yellowed plastic Game Boy color you know you know what i'm talking about like oh no, yes yellow beigey plastic you're, you're gonna try to play it for a minute the 8-bit guy's gonna kick your fucking door in and like spray you down with a retro bright then, then, then the squirrel's gonna attack him so <laughs> pro, pro, problem a solves problem b right you know i want um that's been a gag i've just never got around to do it because of production value and i'm kind of lazy it's like a big vat of retro bright for just regular 
random things like, oh, here's the PCI audio card. First thing we need to do is retro write it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just peroxide. <laughs> A big barrel of peroxide. <laughs> well, then I want like multiple stages. It's like, we need to put it out in the sun to like just then have it out on asphalt. Just like, uh, hit what's... it with a blowtorch real quick. Melt it down. <laughs> well, I, I thought you were going with like sun-dried PCI bus, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice and uh, I guess I guess this is this is the first show uh, we've uh, ever recorded over the PCI bus. <laughs> well, I mean, technically, I you're like, we're, we're pretty sure. Yeah, I understand, but you get what I'm saying. It's worked. We got to bounce out of here over there. PCIe powered happiness. Thanks for watching. It's been brilliant, but it's a good time to cue the music. You can always find our nonsense kicking off at 8:30 Eastern Standard Time, unless you're one of the awesome people making this show possible. Hop into the Discord. We got a pre-pre super chosen. Also posted after the fact in podcast format if that is your jam. But if you want to scream in my face organ, or I will type things back to you occasionally. Head over to Twitter. Boomer social media. <laughs> at Vinstone. Hanging out, Facebook. doing the thing there. Leave a comment on YouTube videos. Leave a comment on Patreon post. Or better yet, hop in our IRC. Hop in our Discord. Hop in our Twitch chat. When we do the community engagement four-hour block on Saturdays we'll get back with you also mast.linuxschemecast.com because federated is uh, a thing we have i might be the baby of a podcast but i'm still not a zoomer so i'm not on the tiktoks but i am on twitter at the burning fool or you can follow me on twitch twitch.tv slash burning fool i don't know if twitter ever actually decides to fuck off and fuck everyone that is using it. I don't know which other social media I might go. Might actually start using Mastodon at that point, but right now, at unaccounted for on Twitter. Go there. <laughs> Let's roll some credits. Do it. <laughs> Misa so happy. <laughs> Where's my Darth Jar Jar Disney? Wow. I mean, that's going to be in the Guardians holiday special, man. James Gunn is going to do that shit. Absolutely. We got to yeah. thank our advisors scrolling slowly. They are Haplo, or no, they're not. They're Omega and out there. They are executive producers. We got uh, with, with Barbara and Scott Michaud, the Hot McAss, Mike G, Mike T, drummer Kohaku, George Pebble, Tomaz, and Unoid, and our little Nicky fans, Abstraction. I guess that's it. Yeah. And the sea monsters, Renault, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Vertenuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Nubbin, David, Darkwing, and System T. And the Death Notes, we have Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCrasny, Kim, Smashly G, Chris, Steven, Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.1, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, back. Gametron, Dodgers, Atheris Gaming, Rue, Turnover, Cheesy Bacon, Kedrailing, Stein, like Gronkala Dunkala. Hollow, Stephen M. Fox Dog, Dog and Spine. Age only M. <laughs> Jana, Zeno, P. AJ, Oil of Hope, Jim. Thank Maxis. you, Oil of Hope for the fog machine. <laughs> Steve Tom. E Hello. and Steve B. Don't forget to old D. Striders at the bottom AJ. there. AJ. Like and Oil of Hope. Yes. Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Linux New. Aldius, Noctuous, John, Eshep, Gamatron. Thank you for our random nonsense in the studio. You're awesome. We love you. Now, Dying of Fire. And we'll see you next week. Bah. Surprise squirrel attack. <laughs> Man, you gotta be careful with like the points though, because at the wrong angle. Five dudes. <laughs> <laughs>